Good morning and welcome to this November the 18th uh, version of Sunrise to Sunset with Pastor Gene. Today we're going to be looking at the first two chapters of the epistle to the Colossians. Uh, in this epistle, uh, Paul is, uh, is referring to the fact that he has had help from someone by the name of Epaphras. And this Epaphras has helped in the spreading of the gospel uh, to the Colossians. It, it's another Christocentric message. I want you to, I want you to listen to this. Um, you'll, recognize, you'll recognize some things uh, that maybe you've sung before in this passage. Uh, Colossians 1, beginning verse 15. Speaking of Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. It really doesn't get much more Christocentric than that. Um, it puts Christ above all things and, and acknowledges that it is Christ who is the one who has done the reconciling. It is Christ for whom all of the world is created. And it, when we live into that, then we are living into this faith as the Bible proclaims it. Uh, when we're more self-centered or something else centered, then we are not Christ-centered. So bear that in mind as you're choosing your priorities. My mother used to say, you know, it's real important that you pick your priorities, son. And, you know, sometimes I pick the right priorities and every time I pick Christ, I pick the right priority. And that will be true for each and every one of us. Uh, the goal was to present um, to present Christians as mature in Christ. He says this in verse uh, 28. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The expectation of a Christian is that we're going to grow and that we're going to become better than ourselves the day before. And that's really that's really this message here. What Paul is saying to the Colossians is the same thing that he says to us. He wants us to grow and to mature in Jesus Christ, to mature in this faith. Over in chapter two, we have a very familiar verse. You probably wondered where this may have come from. It says, for though I am absent in the body, yet I am with you in spirit, and I rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Paul wants to be with people. It's kind of like pastors right now during this pandemic. You know, we're with everyone in spirit, even though we may not be as present as we want to be. And all of that comes from the fact that, you know, we do love our people and we do want to be with them. But right now, things are just different and we're not able to do that like we, like we want to do it. Verses 6 through 15 is a section that you might want to go back and take a look at because here we, f we find Paul talking about how in Jesus we find the fullness of God and we discover those things that are holy and lead us to maturity. Now, <clears throat> it's an interesting section over here in, beginning in verse 20 when he begins to warn about uh, false teaching. That was already beginning during Paul's time. I, we refer to some of that in the later epistles last week, but it's already beginning during the time of Paul. And in this section uh, that, that closes out chapter two, I'll just read it. It says, if with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as though you still belong to the world? 
Why do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. All of these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commands and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humility, and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. Of no value checking self-indulgence. This passage raises the question about rules for morality. Uh, think, sometimes things give the appearance of wisdom and sometimes they promote self-imposed um, piety. But these kinds of things do not have value in any other way or manner than self-indulgence. John Wesley used a term about not being engaged in soft and needless self-indulgence. The whole argument about legalism is one that Christians have wrestled with for a long time. But my question to you today is this, do we try to convince ourselves that we are okay or that something is okay by our own self-imposed rules? Or are we living by God's rules to love God and to love one another from sunrise to sunset.